Hey all, welcome back. This is gonna be really quick. I just wanna record a video, a short one, for everybody to better understand how to interpret my watch list, which there's another video on, and more importantly, how to interpret some of my notes and potentially enter trades on the watch list because sometimes people get mixed up. Now, I know a lot of this is gonna be really easy and straightforward for some of you who are more advanced and been following me for a while, or particularly the insiders because we go really deep on these topics. But I also understand there's some people who are just starting out. There are a lot of people who are just not confident and want you to explain a little bit more or perhaps don't take entries because they need, uh, I don't want to say spoon fed, but they want all the extra confirmations. And then you miss out and you say, ah, I knew what I felt it. So I want to take a look at this today and use these trades in front of us as an example. So I have the QQQ in the middle. There's a reason for that. AMD was the trade today and so was Meta and both of them end up doing really well. So AMD early morning made a push up blue right through our target of 58.55. You can see it moved up here. Uh, I want to touch on that really quickly. Moving up. So when a stock is falling rapidly, we say don't try to catch a falling knife. When it's moving up rapidly, it's the same thing for options only on the inverse, right? Because if we're taking puts, it's a short position. You could choose not to enter. If you do enter, you can get the advantage of the IV and I have a separate video on that you should check out. But set a tight stop and be ready to exit quickly. Okay, so what do I always say? Leave space for sizing, right? So I want to talk about that's a quick note that I make almost every morning. Don't YOLO trade. That's for people who are trading like they need to be rich overnight. No wealthy investor ever got that way by going YOLO because when you have that attitude, you keep going YOLO until you break and you lose, right? You're all in every time. Problem with that is all it takes is once and you're ruined. So you need to be right every time if you're going all out. Don't do that. That's silly. That's nonsense. Not a single one of the professionals that I work with or in my cohort ever approach it like that. Think of any famous investor, uh, Warren Buffett's, they'll tell you that's all silly. All right. So you size properly. And maybe this morning you didn't take any entries with Meta as it broke above. I actually called that trade off. I said, I'm scratching this entry and I'm going to look for something specific. So we've touched on what I mean when I say sizing. You guys know what I mean by spreads. It's the difference between the bid and the ask, right? Those are some of the notes I leave in the morning. Remember, this is an adjunct to my watch list to help you guys better execute with more comfort and confidence and also to understand my notes better. So what else happened? Well, so I say, let's pull let's ease off meta. I don't want to enter here. I want to see the QQ breakdown out of a range, right? So the QQQ spent a long time inside this range. It was here actually for a while, right? Inside the 274, uh, 273.25 to 274. So I put up the tweet around here. And as you can see, I'm saying, I want to see QQQ break down consolidation at a 273.25 to 274.25, this $1 range here. I want to see a breakdown there before taking any entries. And why a breakdown? Why is that more important? Well, our plays today were both puts. So of course, I want the market to be working with me and breaking down out of that range, right? But we're seeing it ebb and flow. So I could have just said, I want to see a breakdown under 273.25, but I was noting we're in a range right now right? This is a range. This is a channel. You see it peak out, come back in, come right back down. So that's what I'm waiting for to take any of our entries. And our entries are to the downside. We want that with a little bit of momentum. So uh, what we see here is for AMD, we do see a touchdown here. You know, this would have been a quick stop and that's fine. Remember, I'm going to stress this. If you're sizing right, you have stops of minus five, minus 10. Okay. You take one trade at 20%. You're now green on the day with multiple stops if you limit your risk. If you don't respect risk, stop trading. Or work on that discipline until you do respect risk. Always respect your money, okay? I am i don't know most people that are going to be watching this video, so don't make me care about your money more than you do. I hate people losing their money that they worked hard for. Respect risk. Respecting risk and positioning well also gives you these extra opportunities. And I've just, we've seen it a million times. So we'll go over it, right? We see it going up and going down. Obviously this one didn't work out, but AMD, if we look at the time here, 1126, AMD was nowhere near our entry point, right? So where is it? AMD is 1126. Oh, geez. Yeah. AMD is here. Our entry points this line. So even with this touchdown, this one, this one worked for us for AMD, you know, maybe for Meta, not for AMD. So what happens? Here we are at 12 o'clock. We've now broken down under 273.25. We have momentum to the downside. So as you're seeing from the tweets that I'm showing you earlier today, and I don't delete any of my tweets. I don't change anything. I don't run any nonsense. Put your word out. Stick by it. I've done that. I believe I have 14,000 tweets or something to that effect. 
it's not hard to get a read on me and I'm not wishy-washy. I don't change my tune. Okay, we get a breakdown under 273.25. That means momentum is on. We can enter now, right? What time is this? You look down here. Here's what the time is for those of you who don't know, right? I'm using thinkorswim because most people are comfortable with thinkorswim, but I myself like interactive brokers for executions. Uh, and if you want to check out that brokerage, I will leave a link to it in this video. Now, here we are at 12 o'clock. That's a strong breakdown, right? Entries are on. What do we get here? 11.56, 11.58, you know, hasn't hit 12 o'clock. Okay, now we're at 12 o'clock. We have inflow here. This will not stop you out going up five, six cents. What happens with Meta? Huge run to the downside, right? You could take that entry before there's even any consolidation. You move down, you know, you move down an entire point here with a lot of momentum. The IV is going to be in your favor. And that just keeps breaking down, breaking down, breaking down. And everybody who is with me, uh, insiders in particular, know my strategy for exiting, scaling out. So it doesn't just mean I take 20% and I risked 5 or 10. No, no, no. It means the minimum I take is 20%. And everybody knows that. That's why you see a lot of the results that I retweet. I appreciate when people are using strategy because I want to see retail traders do well. I want to pay back and pay forward all the fortune and good success that I've been able to have in my life, I, I feel grateful for it. I want to try and help. Okay, so we never limit the upside. You only limit the downside and you have a huge breakdown here, massive results. And again, at 12 o'clock, what do we see for AMD? Well, we said AMD hadn't broken down at 26. Here's AMD at 12 o'clock. Isn't had a breakdown yet, but we now know if we hit entry, it's on, right? So you take your first entry here. This is profit. You get 30% profit there. You get back in on a touch or you hold some of your position sizing. Huge breakdowns, right? So when I'm leaving notes and you're saying, is it on, is it off, is it on, is it off? I can't always be around to answer every single question, although I'd love to and I try to be as engaging as possible. You could look at it. A lot of people just leave comments, walk off and go, sign up from a Discord, bro. No, I'll try and answer as many questions that I have as I'm managing my own private equity fund and consulting and doing my other work during the day. But I can't answer every single question. So I think this was clear. And again, for those of you who've been following me for a while, this was super easy and clear. He said, you know, this is the range when it breaks down out of there. That's when I'm looking at entries. He posted his entries to the downside. We got it. But not everybody does know that. Um, and if you just don't know how to take my watch list at all, and this is all sort of gibberish to you, watch my video on how to take my watch list first, then pair that with this. But again, I was looking for that breakdown out of that range under 273.25. And at that point, once we're under, that's when I'm taking entries. We got that on Meta right after, right? So this was at, was it 12 o'clock? Sorry, is that 12 o'clock or 12.01? I want to be precise here. Oh, 12.01. Okay, perfect. 12.01. Okay, 12.01, risk is on, right? 12.01, uh, yeah, Meta was nowhere, sorry, AMD was nowhere near, but this never retraced. It kept under that range, so the entry is on and a huge breakdown. So I will post notes like that sometimes, this isn't something I'm going to post every single day, but when I do identify it, I harped on this. I kept retweeting, talking about it, saying, hey, we're still stuck in that range, still stuck in that range. This is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a breakdown. Um, and just know that these days are hyper volatile. I've seen one or two people talk about trends. Guys, you don't establish a trend in 10 minutes of trading, right? When we go from here to here, that doesn't mean the markets are in an uptrend. It just means the markets are moving up for, for a 10-minute period. Uh, even this isn't necessarily a downtrend. We're ebbing and flowing. There's a lot of volatility today. So I hope this helps everybody. Just keep an eye on my notes. If I can help with my notes, I'm very, very specific. I don't mix my words. I don't backtrack. I don't do the whole kind of speak vaguely. That way, hopefully, later on, we can interpret it and I can give myself the best interpretation of everything. I try to be as clear as possible, and I do engage with everybody as much as possible. That's what I was noting at. Uh, this is Confluence working with the markets as we're pushing down. I did have these as put entries. I don't change that. I don't do the calls and puts game. So hopefully this was a helpful video. You saw what I was looking for. I tweeted it through the day. It eventually happened and hugely successful on both fronts. And just a reminder, if you size correctly, you don't go all in, right? Let's say you get stopped out on your first size on your first entry, then you don't have any money to re-enter, right? You blew it all in one shot. That's casino style. But if you're strategic, right, you have a couple entry opportunities, maybe you took a different trade. Our only entry really would have been AMD earlier in the day. Okay, if you take that, and it was sort of the opposite of the falling knife, if you take that, that's one stop out. That's okay. You stop out for 5%, maybe 10. Okay, what do you make on the backside? Over 100%, 80%, 70%. That's why you size strategically. Your results 
Overall, your wealth is the accumulation of the average of your results, not one day. Okay, guys. Thanks, everyone.